post five years of GST implementation, it is seen that GST is still remains an evolving law. Leave alone a subtle law, so to speak. While some of the issues are ironed out, there are still plenty of issues that need consideration in terms of ground level reality check. GST is slowly moving from compliance to litigation. Scrutiny of returns, issuance of SCN, investigations, audits have started keeping in view the limitation period for financial year 17 in 1880 and 1819, slowly approaching under that. In this change in circumstances, the role and responsibility of professionals practicing in GST has become even more daunting, even more challenging. More so, with continuous changes that are taking place almost after every GST Council meet. The recent example is 47th GST Council meet and the corresponding notifications and circulars issued by the CBIC. It is sufficient to give us the impression that so far as GST is concerned, probably we have traveled a fair distance, but the ultimate destination in terms of settled law, it's still some distance to go, my dear friends. Nevertheless, it's been quite a journey so far and it still remains so. In this backdrop, let me discuss some of my suggestions based on my practical experience on how to handle litigations under GST and how to represent the client's cases before the GST authorities. First of all, at the very outset, I would like to impress upon the professionals that it has now become imperative, rather a responsibility for the professionals to develop a deep sense of interpretation, understanding and absorption of the provisions of law and the applicability of the same in their clients' cases. This invariably requires the professionals to be conversant with the law in the first place, which is absolutely essential when it comes to GST practice, because if you are not fully conversant with the law itself, if an issue comes, you are more likely to lend yourself and your client in trouble. For this to happen, I suggest that the professionals must make it a habit to go through provisions of GST law along with updates and circulars, notifications relevant on a regular basis. A good reference book on GST with commentaries may be referred to for this purpose. And then after going through the provisions as well as the analysis, one must try to form his or her own opinion to develop a deep sense of absorption of law. Next comes the importance of taking note of judgments and ratio decidedly laid down in those judgments before applying it to the facts and circumstances of the case. If an issue comes, first examine the notice or SCN itself so as to discern the facts and grounds on which it has been issued by the authority. Then collect all your facts and data pertaining to the issue raised therein. Then figure out whether your case is factual only or involves some legal ground as well. Once having decided, you have to jot down the factual arguments and legal arguments separately. At this stage, you need to be very clear in your mind as to which stand you are taking and whether under the circumstances that stand would help your case or not. For example, it would be futile to go for legal arguments when your case is based purely on factual aspects and can be presented merely by going through factual explanations. If your case involves legal ground, Think and jot down the possible legal arguments which are applicable to your case. Browse through the prominent case laws on the subject matter. Make use of some good online or offline text library or text magazine. Identify the key applicable case laws which are in your favor. Analyze the facts there, the ratio decided and the involved. Also see if case law in your favor has been overruled or distinguished in another judgment which is extremely important. Do not quote a judgment unless its ratio decided is on in your favor and the issue is identical or similar and it is not being overruled. Sometimes you may come across a situation where just going through the SCN or ACMT 10 or any other proceedings, you may find that the facts or figures mentioned therein are erroneous and doesn't match with the actual facts. For example, while issuing ASMT 10 for alleged mismatch between 3B and 2A for the financial year 1718, the authorities may wrongly mention the amount of credit appearing in 2A, whereas in fact 2A might show some different amount of credit. So you need to download 2A as on date and also compare it with the ITC as per 2A reflecting in GSTR 9. If there is any discrepancy in the notice itself, you must bring it to the notice of the authority issuing such notice at the very first instance. Finally, after going through the provisions, matter in issue, legal and factual background, along with applicable case law, if any, 
you may set down to draft reply to the issue in hand while drafting reply bear in mind the intricacy of the issue involved whether in your opinion the issue is settled or not and whether the issue is likely to lead to further litigation at the higher level not just in your case but in general as well say for example the burning issue these days or demands created on account of alleged mismatches between the credit claim in 3b and 2a last but not the least another challenge for the consultants and professionals that remains is that the departmental authorities more often than not are carrying their preconceived notions in most of the cases it will be seen that authorities themselves are not trained and knowledgeable enough to handle some of the complex issues that are coming out from their intelligence mechanism and communicated to them through the intelligence mechanism in such cases a professional needs to stay calm while dealing with authorities and try to represent his client to the best of his ability it is also better for a professional to admit if there is any lapse or if there is no recourse available in such a case you have to be honest with your client as well and not try to satisfy client incorrectly by giving him misleading information or false solicitation instead be honest and tell him precisely that this much cannot be defended at the same time art of advocacy must be learned over a period of time which comes through practice and experience the more issues you handle the more ripe you become at all times maintain your calm maintain your composure and represent your client to the best of your knowledge and ability thank you very much